Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am starting my quilted jacket project. So I have already started the process um, just because I was so unsure if this was actually going to work. My mum has done quite a lot of patchwork quilting and I've always wanted to give it a go but I thought I didn't have the patience for it and then quilted jackets have come into fashion and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make one. I've also twirled a very rough shape for the jacket. I want it to be quite long with a tie in the middle, but I'm still unsure of the collar, so I need to decide on that. Let me show you everything I've done so far. Okay, so these are all the blocks I've made up so far, and I now need to decide on the spacing of these. I'm probably gonna make another block with you guys so you can see how I've done it. Yeah, I've got a mixture of lots of different fabrics, considering taking these ones out actually because I don't think the black in this goes. But this was my original quilt design that I made a while ago. This was actually, I made this at the start of the first lockdown, but I started doing more dressmaking instead of giving the quilt a go, so I'm doing it now in the third lockdown. And these are the pattern pieces I used. So I have a 12 by 12 centimeter square, and then a six by six, and then a six by six by whatever that length is. <laughs> um, and that's basically what I've used for these blocks. I now need to figure out this length here. Um, but I'll show you guys how I make one of these to start with. This was also the design for my jacket, but I still need to figure out the collar, if I'm gonna have a collar or not, and I've just thought of something else I could put there instead. So that is still a work in progress, really. But yeah, it's very exciting. They're very satisfying once they are finished like this, and I'm excited to get them into their squares. The only thing I'm going to have to think carefully about is how much distance to put them apart and spacing and everything. But yeah, got a long way to go with this, but it should be fun and I'm really excited when it's finished to just be like, oh, I made that. I spent like a week making that. <laughs> this is gonna be a long process. So I've cut the next block's amount of squares to go in the middle. Then I'm going to do triangles in this and this, this one's a Liberty, and this one is a vintage Laura Ashley. And then I need to cut out the cream that goes in the filler gaps. So I'm going to do that now, and I've been using this rotary cutter to do that. If you're a proper quilter, I know you're probably cringing at this because this is not the way to cut <laughs> quilt blocks out. Um, but I just made these little templates and I've just been sort of holding them down and cutting around them with the tool. And so far, it's been okay. <laughs> but that's not the proper way to do it. Um, that is the rosy method. now at my machine and the stitch length I have been using is 2.2 so much smaller than I usually use and I bought this quarter inch foot which is basically just a lot slimmer than a usual foot so you can see where the seam allowance is because um, you don't want really big bulky seam allowance with quilting. The first pieces I sew together are the printed to the blank so I basically just take one cream and one printed, put them good sides together, and then I will stitch down that edge. And then I do that for all of those, and then I go and press them open, and then I will show you the next step.
now that I have these sewn together and pressed down I can then follow my toile piece of quilting and I sew this block first so I do one like this and then one like that and I sew them together along there and then I stitch the ones that go along the top so I just got a square in the corner and then you have one here and one like that these have now been sewn together and ironed and now I'm going to attach these ones to this edge and then iron those down attach that along here and iron it down and then that is a block done but they'll obviously look like that with the same print going around them I've given the next step a go because I was really nervous about this bit and it was the trickiest bit definitely by far. So I made a little pattern for the strips but I may just go and ask my mum to use her little quilting ruler thing but it's just so hard to match up the square in the middle. It kind of looks okay on camera but it's a little bit off on most corners <laughs> but from afar doesn't really matter and that sort of thing doesn't really annoy me too much. I've just been placing a bit of quilting on me to see what it would possibly look like. So now I have to do the same for all of these. That's going to take me ages. I think I have nine of these in total. So that is the job for this evening. So I finished off the blocks last night. I stayed up until about half nine sewing and then I stopped. My usual cutoff point is nine because otherwise I feel like I can't switch off in the evening. So today's plan is to finalize the pattern of the jacket and then decide the placement of the blocks on the jacket and cut out the wadding. Although it's probably gonna take me all day to figure out the spacing in between the pieces and getting that finished so if I get to cutting out the wadding that will probably be quite an achievement for the day. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I showed you me cutting out these sections so I sewed this to this to that and then I sewed those two together like that and then it just is much easier to do that way. So it wasn't actually as tricky as I thought it was all going to be. Um, and then I neatened up the edges along here. Well, that one doesn't look very neat. <laughs> Not being too careful about things being super precise with the points on the triangles and things. Like some triangles don't have the pointiest of points, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to finalize the pattern now and then figure out which ones go where etc etc. I decided to not go with a collar or facing and I'm just going to stitch some bias binding or some binding all the way around the jacket instead. It kind of fits in more with the quilting vibe anyway. So this was the toile I made for the jacket. This is the length I wanted it to be and it's going to have a belt here as well and big patch pockets. So yeah I now need to decide where to place all of the quilting panels. So I've just been working out the area that I need for the front, back and the sleeves. I've decided with any cutoffs I'm going to make them into the belt somehow, um, just so they've got a little bit of quilting in the belt. So now I'm going to decide which ones of these are my favourites, like which ones I want on the front, which ones I want on the back um, and go from there. This 
part is definitely testing my math skills. Um, I've managed to finish the back piece. Um, I'll show you in a sec. But I've basically roughly tried to work out the measurements of the triangles and bits in between and then I sort of placed some bits I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I don't really know how I did this, to be honest. So this is the back panel with bits placed together now. And then if I were to lay the pattern on top, it covers it, it covers it perfectly with lots of room to spare because when you quilt, it sometimes shrinks it down a bit. So, yay. So happy that at least one is done. And it was very confusing, not going to lie. I now need to go and do the same to all the other pieces. <laughs> Morning guys, so yesterday I finished the two front panels and the back panel and now I've pretty much run out of the cream fabric. So I've had to order some more of that. So today I'm going to cut out the wadding and the backing fabric and tack them together before I can start quilting them. Still unsure of what design I'm going to quilt them like. I'm pretty sure I'll probably end up just doing straight lines or something that's very easy to do. So yeah, that is the plan for today. So I need to now lie these down. I'll do the front ones on top of each other so that the pattern is the same and cut maybe like two or three centimeters over the seam allowance of the actual pattern for the coat. And then I will cut the wadding and the lining to match. And then after I've quilted it, I can put the pattern back on and cut it out properly. So I finished tacking the quilting down and it has taken until about 5 o'clock today, although I only really started working at about 12, so that's not too bad. Ready to be quilted. I've tacked all of them. I started, mum told me that you're meant to start in the middle and tack in lines like that and then do lines like that and then do some vertically. So that's what I've done and it's taken me forever <laughs> and I hate hand stitching so it was not fun but it's very important because you don't want the fabric all bunching up underneath or moving all around the place. So I did some stitching experiments because this is the lining I've got inside and I initially bought some white like a big white bed sheet just to put on the back and then I was like oh I can just use white stitching. And then clearly I forgot my plan and I ended up putting that there. So this was the initial stitch, which is just white, plain white stitching. And then I thought, oh, pink might be quite nice, like a really light pink. So the pink looks really cute. But then I thought, oh, maybe I will do a darker color on the back so that it doesn't, you don't have all the lines on the red. And this blue would actually be the color of this fabric. So, kind of think of it like that, but often it shows through on the other side, um, the bobbin colour. And I actually really like how that looks, I think it looks really cute, it's like a little bit spotty. So I quite like that, so I'm going to get a lot of this colour, so that I can do that in the bobbin. And then I'm going to use light pink on here, because it just gives a little bit more depth than the white one does. The white one just sort of looks really stark. I was going to use one of the spare blocks I have for the pocket, but I'm thinking I might do it plain white now with the stitching detailing a bit different, perhaps. 
Um, so I'm going to wait until I've quilted all of the jacket and then I can see what it looks like. But anyway, I need to go and sort my life out a little bit right now because when I get into these sewing sprees, everything else goes out the window. So I have so much washing to do and tidying and general life stuff. <laughs> So I'm gonna go and do that and then I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. So the shop that I go to to source my thread is shut during this pandemic, which is very annoying, but can't let these things get to us, can we? <laughs> so I've had a longer than usual morning finding thread and I managed to ring up another fabric shop near me and they can do click and collect. Um, so I got some thread, just sort of guessed the color. I had one here that was sort of the colour I needed so I just ended up getting that and one that matched because that's all they had in stock for that sort of colour. So this is the lining fabric that I have inside it's just cotton and that is a pretty good match. This was the one I had already. It doesn't look too different when it's just a bit of thread going down there it doesn't look this bright and then I just got an extra one of these for the front but it's crazy like this is the exact same colour and they look so different to me. And I'm going to mark out my first line so that it goes really central and then I can just use my foot on the sewing machine to do all the other lines. So I've just drawn a really faint line down the middle and I'm going to go and sew that on a stitch length four probably um, and then just start going along from there. I've just finished quilting one panel. Took quite a while to do all of this stitching. Um, obviously it's still got all the tacking in there still which I need to take out. Um, but I just thought I'd show you the difference between quilted and not quilted. I went for a really close together stitch because I'm using cotton bump which moves quite a lot apparently. <laughs> so you need to have a tighter um, quilt stitch. If I were using like a polyester wadding then I wouldn't have needed to do such a tight stitch. Yeah I'm going to spend the rest of the day quilting the other front and back piece. What are you doing? <laughs> hey look, where are you going? Are you okay? See? Nothing. Okay, a little update time. It is now lunchtime and I've been sewing a pocket this morning. I still have another one to do but I wanted to do a practice one and check I like the look of it before I filmed a load of it and then decided I didn't like it. And last night I stayed up to finish the quilting of the back of the jacket and this morning I felt like a sack of bricks were like piled up on my shoulders. I don't know why when I sew I sometimes get really tense and I think it's a lot of like hunching over the machine can hurt my neck and my shoulders so I should probably do some stretches. So I'll show you the pocket I've just done and the finished quilting that I finished last night. These are the front pieces finished with the quilting and then this is the pocket that I did this morning. So I'm not sure which way I want to place it, I don't know if I want it straight or at an angle so my hand can go in a bit easier. Um, so yeah, I did a different direction of quilting on the pocket and I just kept it white in the end because I think it's going to be busy enough anyway so I didn't want to put any more quilting on that. So I'm going to do a reflection of that on this side and then this is the back piece quilted. I really love the colours on the back, I just think they look so nice together. I, I tried to kind of keep the tones together so this is a bit more blue toned compared to the front which is a little more red toned. Just ended up working out like that. <laughs> I now need to take all of the tacking out which I'm sure is going to take a while. And then after lunch I will show you guys how I made the patch pocket and I can cut pattern pieces out now, now that it's been quilted. I am really enjoying this little project though. I love, it's just so satisfying. Every time I hold it up against my body, I'm just like. <laughs> I've had lunch and my fabric arrived and they've sent the wrong fabric. <laughs> uh, I swear this keeps happening to me. Every time I order something that I need urgently, it doesn't 
arrive like it arrives quickly but then it doesn't it's not the right thing so i've messaged the seller and hopefully they'll get back to me soon and send out the right one because it's so annoying so this is a classic example of um many different shades of white <laughs> yeah so that is very white and this is off-white it's not cream it's off-white <laughs> ivory and that is very very white so annoying but anyway, let me show you my pocket and how I made that. Mum just came in to look at my pockets and she said they look like oven gloves, so. <laughs> so this is the pocket we're going to make and this is what the inside of the pocket looks like. Um, I had to pull through the lining, um, so that's why there's one edge here, but that doesn't matter because when I stitch this down onto the coat, going to cover it anyway and I just decided to do some piping down the sides because I like how it looks because then you can just stitch right in the ditch all the way around and it just looks quite neat when it's sitting against another fabric so this is everything you will need I start off by quilting together two pieces of the ivory fabric with the cotton bump in the middle and I need to draw a really faint line across the center as my starting guide point. that panel is now quilted and I then place over the pocket um, pattern piece and then I try and line up the stitch lines in a 90 degree angle so I just lay the piping on and bring a little bit off the side and then I will just follow all the way around like so just stitching it down piping has been sewn on and now I'm going to attach the lining piece of cotton which I went with a really soft brush cotton so when I put my hand in the pocket it's nice and warm so I just lay that on top and then I stitch as close to the piping as possible and I leave about that much of a gap on this side I'm just turning the pocket inside out now well the right way around <laughs> and pretty much done. You've just got to find all the edges and make all the piping pop out. And then I'm just going to go and give this a good press so that it sits nice and flat. So there we go, those are the finished pockets ready to be sewn on. This next step is definitely one of the most satisfying. <laughs> So I now need to lay the pattern on top of the quilting and cut around it. I have the pattern pieces cut out now. So we've got the front pieces and the back piece. And I've just been positioning the pockets. I tried it on and positioned them in the right place. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go with them straight like this because I think it just looks a bit more classic. So I'm now going to stitch around in the ditch of the piping all the way around and then stop about here and then leave this open. Mm. 
that, Lucy, a football for me to kick? I mean it this time. No! <laughs> Quite a few days later now i think i updated you guys and told you that i ordered more fabric to finish the sleeves and they sent the wrong one the seller that i bought the stuff off has been super unhelpful and didn't just send out more of the correct stuff instead they decided to just mess me around so much and so i'm just sending that stuff back now um and i ordered it from another supplier and it's the exact match so so they just clearly don't know what ivory means <laughs> but anyway it's here now and i've spent the morning sorting the sleeves out um i'll show you where i'm up to so these panels are the fabric i needed more of um so i've just sewn those on this morning so they're in a big square like this and these are my sleeve pattern pieces i'm doing a curved sleeve which has two pattern pieces. I now need to quilt all of this. I used um, a cotton sheet underneath, this is white, and you can see the difference. It's such a huge difference, like I could not have done that next to that, it would have just looked so bad. Um, so you're not going to see what's underneath the sleeve, so I just used this sheet. So these are not exactly the same, they have exactly the same spacing panels, but one is like the flipped side because obviously in the sleeves are different on both sides. I also attached the front and the back the other day so it's actually starting to look like a jacket now. I'll try it on quickly for you guys so you can see how it looks. This is a jacket without the sleeves on and the pockets turned out to be the perfect height for my hands to go in and it's so nice with the brushed cotton inside. They're so soft. Also sorry about my weird injured finger. I managed to lino cut under my fingernail yesterday. Very painful. And I definitely don't want a collar. I really like the simpleness of the line at the top. Um, so I'm just gonna bind that at the end with the same ivory fabric. So yeah, let's get on and quilt these sleeves. I've now quilted both panels for the sleeves. So now I'm going to decide where I want to place the sleeve pattern because um, I have a little bit of room to go up or down or to the side a little bit. And I also just had a delivery of these flowers from my sister which were my Christmas present because she got me a subscription to Bloom and Wild. Um, I'm not sure how long for but this is the second lot that have come through and so pretty so I thought I would put them in here while I'm working today. So let's get these sleeves cut out and constructed. Sleeves have been constructed and I've just pressed down the seams. I just need to put them in the armholes. Um, I will just, I'll show you how I do that quickly. So this is the left armhole. So I've got the left sleeve and then I have a notch at the top where it meets the seam up here. And then you just want to turn the jacket inside out. I can't do this with one hand. <laughs> so you turn the jacket inside out but you keep the sleeve the right way around and then I just go around and pin it roughly just so I know it's gonna be in the right place when I sew and then I just sew it in. going to try and finish the jacket today so we're working on the belt first of all so I had one block left of the bare paws quilting pattern and I've just spliced it up into um, six centimeter widths 
and I've cut some more ivory and I'll show you how I'm going to do the belt. So this is the pattern piece for the belt. Um, so it's pretty long so I'm going to make a sort of jumbled up quilted um, belt and then put wadding in the middle and I'm going to bind it around the outside. Now I'm going to just fill in the gaps with bits of ivory like that. Okay I've quilted together the belt and I've gone over and overlocked it and I kind of think the overlocking actually looks all right as it is without having binding on it so I'm going to leave that right till the end to see if I really need to do binding on it. And then this is the binding I just made to go around the coat so I'm just going to get on and stitch that on now. I've just stitched around the front sleeves and the bottom with the bias binding and then I added just little tiny belt loops with the rest of the bias binding I had left um, just at the sides so the tie is now all secured on and I think this is it done. <laughs> I might add bias binding to the belt at some point but I think for now it's fine just like that. Super happy with how it's turned out. I'm going to take some proper photos in it tomorrow because um, I've got to shoot some other stuff for a different brand so I'll be all nice and put together. <laughs> Yay it's finally done! Mm -hmm. 